Hey guys, it's Kevin. Welcome to another tutorial video we're going to be doing today. And uh, this is going to be a combination of Photoshop and Cinema 4D. And so I want to show you how I can create uh, this image. And so we have 4th of July, which is coming up in America. And this is a pretty big uh, holiday for Americans. And so I wanted to create a picture about praying for our country, our country that has uh, experienced a lot of division and brokenness. Uh, lately, and so I wanted to show you uh, how to pray, how to create an image of praying hands over a broken America. So that's kind of the idea we're going to do here. I've got uh, just a couple pictures here. Number one is this one. It's a picture of my wife, and uh, it's an old picture, uh, but it is a picture of her with her hands uh, clasped together over an open Bible. And I am actually standing right above here. You can see the ladder, uh, the feet of the ladder right here. I'm on a ladder right above her, aiming it directly down. So I'm directly over top of her uh, taking this picture. We're actually not going to have the Bible in this picture. Uh, we're going to replace this with something else. Uh, but I just wanted these hands, uh, these nice uh, praying hands taken from that vantage point. The next thing we're going to need is uh, a picture of the United States. And so I, I've got this picture off uh, offline and uh, just uh, it's just a, a regular JPEG image. It's got a white background with a blue um, cutout of America. And so what I'm going to do here is we need to get this ready for Cinema 4D. And so I'm going to have to convert this into a path uh, for Cinema 4D. And the best way to do that is just get your out, get your uh, magic wand tool and uh, just click that uh, right here in the blue. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna select everything that's blue, which is the shape I want. And then I'm just gonna do Control C and Control V on my keyboard. And now I've got this nice blue cutout of uh, the United States. And so what I want to do next is I want to go to my path um, tab right here and I'm going to click down. I'll make Well, let's make sure we are control clicked on our country here. Go to path and then click this button right here, which says make work path from selection. When I click that, now I have this nice little path created in Photoshop. You see all these little blue squares everywhere. Um, and that's what I want. Now I'm going to go to file, export, and paths to Illustrator. And uh, we'll just go ahead and save that and we'll just call this our USA path. Okay, that's all I needed to do in Photoshop for now. And so what I'm gonna do is go into Cinema 4D and uh, we are here and let's go ahead and open up that path that I just created. All right, there is our path. I've got it right here. You can see the outline of the United States. That looks good. Uh, we need to go ahead and put it into a, uh, a uh, loft first. So let's go ahead and go to loft. Drag that in here. Oops. Drag the path into the loft. There we go. So now we have this, uh, this shape is now covered in. It's got one big polygon, essentially, right here. A little bit of geometry going on. Um, and so that's good. Let's go ahead and uh, select both of those and connect objects and delete. Now we need to add just a little bit of height to this because right now it's just completely flat. And uh, so I'm just going to hold down my control key and then just drag out. Oops, not, not that one. No, control is going to do two of them. Oh, I need to, let's go ahead and rotate it first. Let's rotate it on its side. There we go. Now what we need to do is click that one, uh, make sure your polygons are selected. Now hold control and drag it up. There we go. So we're going to drag it up till you get a shape kind of like this. Um, just need to make sure we're on our, our polygon faces here. Um, and so now we have a nice little... Um, cut out of America with some depth to it. You do notice that on the backside though, there's not a, um, there's no backside. This, this, there's not really a uh, back face to it. And so that's a really quick thing. Click on your edges here, right click and do close polygon hole, and then just click that. And uh, now we've got a face on both sides. That's exactly what we wanted. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of bevel here because if you zoom in, you see like the edges of the top and then the edges of the sides. Uh, that's just a little bit too sharp. We need to add just a little bit of a bevel to that. And that's pretty simple to do. Uh, just make sure you're on your uh, polygons here. And uh, we're going to right click and do bevel. And I'm just going to make my subdivisions at four and uh, my offset at like 0.2 or something like that. And uh, did that work out pretty well? 
Just a little bit in there, I guess. Don't want a lot. Oh, I did it too much. All right, let's try this again. We're going to click this. Okay, let's try this one more time. All right, we're going to right click and do bevel and then drag to the right and just add just a little bit of bevel right here to the edges. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. To the right. There we go, something kind of like that. So now you zoom in, you can see this little bevel that's going between the top of the face and down to these edges here. And that's what I want. It's doing a little bit of weird things here with the geometry, but I'm not worried about that too much. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do before I move on is uh, I'm gonna make a cut um, on our edge here. So you see right here, we only have one, um, essentially it only goes down on the edges uh, once it, and so we want to do a, a line cut here so make sure you're on edge mode do a K on your keyboard and loop so KL and we're just going to cut a few little selections here and what that does is it makes it into just a, a few more uh, polygons here so it just kind of gives you a little bit more geometry here on the edges okay that seemed a little bit more complicated than it needed to be, uh, but there is our um, there is our United States of America right there. And now what we want to do is we want to convert this to like a texture and break it up a little bit. So I'm going to bring in my let's see here. Let's bring in our Redshift view here, and then what we're going to do is so you can see this in Redshift. That is my render engine for this one. And so um, this is what it looks like right now, which looks pretty boring. Is just one big gray cutout of the United States. And so what we want to do is we want to first add some lights to it. Now I have an extension here. This is by Grayscale Gorilla. And we're going to um, add our light kit browser. It's a really cool plugin if you want to add that in here. Um, I purchased it from them, but you can create your own lights if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and do like um, just something basic, like octagon front is fine. And so what it does is it's going to create this um, this little background for us. If you zoom out, let's see here. If you zoom out, you can see it's just like a big old octagon um flash right here then it's aiming it directly at our geometry and so that's all it is um, you can create your own uh, backdrop and stuff like that but I, I like just to have these plugins uh, for something like this I think this is helpful uh, but let's go ahead and grab our um, our loft here and let's just drag it down to the ground or right above the ground at least and uh, that looks pretty good you can see our uh, render view down here at the right that's what it should look like. Uh, some of the edges got a little um, a little bit messed up with the bevel, and uh, I'm not worried about that because we're gonna break it all in just a few minutes anyway. So that's not a big deal. Um, but let's go ahead and just get our camera right so we're right above it. We got this nice tall view aiming directly down at this shape. Okay, now what I want to do is uh, let's go ahead and before we add the texture, we'll add the texture last. Before we add the texture, let's go ahead and break it up into a nice um, bunch of rocks, you know, make it look like it's broken on all these edges and stuff. And that's pretty easy to do. Let's go to uh, MoGraph and Veronai Fracture. Put your loft right in there. We can rename our loft and we'll just call it America. And uh, this is this is the um, default here for our Veronai and uh, we want to go ahead and uh, add some more of these blocks because right now that's just not very many that's just a few um, cutouts we want to add a lot more so it looks more like a, a rock fracture uh, so go to Veronai fracture and then click on your sources and then click on point generator distribution and just drag down a little bit and it's right now it has 20 points uh, we don't want 20 we want a lot more than that i'm going to do like 900 points um, and now we have a bunch of them and uh, it looks kind of weird right there how it's doing that let's change our seed there we go sometimes ronnie's just act a little bit weird but uh, i think that's good right there so we have all of these uh these fractures everywhere you can also go down to like your um 
distribution type and change it. I like inverse inverse normal. I think that one looks pretty good sometimes. And uh, I just want to change my standard deviation. And what that does is it's going to put more um, it's going to put more um, broken parts on the edges. So you have a lot of broken parts up here where Maine is at, and down here in Florida, and up here in Washington. And it, it just looks kind of cool like that. But uh, you can do uniform or whatever you want to do. Um, all right, that looks good right there. Now, if we were going to um, actually, let's go ahead and save our tutorial project. Let's go ahead and save this. Cinema 4D does like to crash sometimes. Um, let's go ahead and uh, add a, a simulation tag to it. So our Veronai fracture, go ahead and do simulation tag and rigid body. And then go down to your S curve, which is essentially is the ground. The, your ground uh, texture needs to have a collider body and uh, something like that. So when we hit play now, it's going to fall um, and it's going to start breaking. And so you can see right there, I'm going to stop the animation. Um, you can see what's going on here. You can see it breaking, uh, especially down here at the edges. And so it doesn't break as much during the, the, the center part of the, uh, the country. It's just breaking like here on the edges because there's more fractures out there. There's not as many up here. Um, and so that looks pretty cool just like that. I think that looks uh, pretty good. Um, but what I want to do is I want to have a nice little crack that's going right down the heart of America. So it's kind of like it's breaking everywhere, but it's also like breaking um, uh, in the middle as well. And so I want to do that. So here's how I like to do that is I like to um, add a um, plane effector. So go to uh, MoGraph effector and plane to make sure that your uh, Verona fracture when you click on effectors, make sure that plane is in there. And that's what we want. And uh, what it's doing is it's it's essentially putting the entire Veronai fracture in this plane adjustment, and it's moving everything up on the y-axis 100 centimeters. I don't want that to do that. Let's go ahead and change that to zero, and let's just keep it back where it's at. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to make a fall off for this plane, and uh, that's going to make it only adjust the plane or you know these positions uh, where I tell it to. And so I'm going to go to fall off. I'm going to click on a box field. And uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's, there's a big box right here. And I want this box to be pretty skinny. So let's make sure our box is uh, very small. So I want to make the size of the X um, like, I don't know, like eight centimeters or something. Uh, we'll change it if we need to. Uh, but you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but you see this little block box that's going right through the middle um, of the United States here. And so that box is going right through the middle and that's the everywhere that this plane of um, effector is going to work. Um, and so what I want to do is go back to our plane um, parameters here or our, um, yeah, our parameters. And uh, we want to move some of these blocks that are in this box right here. So I want to, for example, I'm going to go to my X um, parameters here and let's just change it to like uh, 50. And so what this done is it's it's taken everything that's in that um, fall off box field and it's moved those um, pieces off to the right 50 centimeters. And so it's kind of all jumbled everywhere. Well, I just want to completely get rid of them. And so I'm just going to do like 500. And so now they're they're almost completely gone. There's some right here. Let's do a thousand. OK, so now they're mostly gone. There's one little piece right there, but that's OK. Um, and probably the reason that is, is because of our fall off. Let me see real quick. Okay, so there's two boxes in our fall off and one of them is really hard to see sometimes. One of them is just a little bit too wide for me. So I'm gonna do it kind of like this. Okay, that might be a little bit better. And let's just change this size here to like 10. Okay, so now we've got a nice little broken part of America. Okay, maybe more like that might be better. We got a nice broken part of America um, because we've got this plane effector on the middle of the shape and all of the pieces are just taken over like a thousand centimeters. So we don't even see them anymore. So now what happens when we hit the play button the whole thing starts to fall just a couple inches and it breaks everywhere. Um, and it's got this big cut right in the middle. And so that looks, I think that looks pretty good 
just like that. If you keep holding the animation, you know, all the pieces are going to fall off and eventually you're not even going to recognize the shape. It's just going to be like a big old blob of uh, rocks everywhere. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I don't play it too long. And so I just want to kind of play it like this. And uh, I think that will be enough. Actually, that may be too much. Let's go back to our box field. Turn that in just a little bit. So just play it for just a little bit. All right, let's try this again. Not bad. And almost always, this is just like a trial and error type thing. All right, so let's turn our plane effector back on. Okay, something kind of like that I think looks pretty good. I do want, I think I would do, I want a few more rocks in here. So let's go to our... Verona Fracture one more time. I had 900 to start with. Let's do 1,200. Maybe that'll be a little bit better. Okay. Now let's hit our play. And now they're broken out pretty good like that. I think that looks, I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to leave it like that for now. And uh, I think that's going to be fine. Now let's make sure our camera is exactly where it needs to go. So something kind of like that. And... Because remember, remember, if we go back to Photoshop, we're going to have this this hand right here that's right over top. So we want to make sure that where this Bible's at is where the the uh, this country's going. So we want to make sure we're right overhead. And I think something like that looks pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and add a texture on it just so we can see what this kind of looks like. And so I'm going to use a Redshift texture. Again, I've got lots of textures I've purchased over the years. And um, you may have your own textures as well. But just a, just a pretty basic uh, stone texture here. And I'm just going to put it right on my Verano Fracture like this. And you can see down here at the bottom, you can see this stone shape. I am going to change the parameters just a little bit. Uh, instead of 100%, 100%, I'm going to do 50 and 50. And um, I'm also going to change it to, instead of UVW, I'm going to change it to cubic like that. Let's try UVW again. I think either one works fine. If you do it like this, where you see the bottom part of it, sometimes that looks better at cubic. But since we're doing it straight, straight up and down, UVW may be just as, just as good. Okay, so we're right above our cam, right above our country here. That looks good, nice and broken. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make a camera and save it so I can don't have to worry about this. So I'm just going to um, make a Redshift camera. I'm going to hit this little button right there. And then I'm going to go down here to my uh, Redshift view here. And I just hit the lock. That way, when I turn this off and start moving stuff around, it kind of stays locked there. Okay, so I think that looks good like this. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure when I'm looking at this Photoshop picture, I see that the there's a light um, when I took the photo here, there's a light to the right. So there's like a soft box here maybe, or maybe it's just a window light. I don't remember. Uh, but obviously the light is on the right side and it's going towards uh, the left. And so we need to do that in our um, project file too. So let me go ahead and take this big old soft box and uh, I'm just going to move it on the other side. There we go. So I just want to make sure it's over here instead. I'm looking down at my render view just to make sure um, I've got it right. But there should be a shadow going from the right side to the left side. If I look, Again, if I look at this picture here, it's very soft. You, see, you hardly see any shadow at all, at all right 
uh, on the left side here. But it's obviously it's obviously over here, and it's going this direction. Uh, so we know that that's where it needs to go. Um, and so that looks, I think that looks pretty good like that. Maybe move it just a little bit like this. Okay, and we can make it bigger too, which is going to make it just a little bit softer. Um, and you can also go and, and play with your shadows and stuff. I'm not going to worry about all of that. Um, I just want to make sure the light direction is the appropriate direction. Okay, I think that looks good like that. Now, the last thing I want to do before we go into Photoshop is um, I want to make a duplicate uh, of this. So I'm just going to go to my Verani Fracture, hold Control down. Now I've got two of these. Remember, we are at frame four. Um, and so now I've got this other one. I'm going to bring it way up here. So now we have two uh, two random um, stone Americas here. But let's go to this Verani Fracture 2, and let's go to Effectors and just get rid of that plane effector and because uh, I don't want that there. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put a random effector on it. So let's go to uh, MoGraph, random. And now, man, that is that is crazy. You just you just see little rocks everywhere. Um, and that's that's what I want. I want just like a bunch of rocks everywhere. I'm going to change this parameters there like 500, 500, 500. Just because I don't want many of them. Um, and we can make them smaller too. Let's try to make them just a little bit smaller. Okay, and maybe put them just a little bit closer together. 200, 200, 200. Okay, so the idea is here, what I want to do is I want to have like all these other little pieces uh, on the ground. So I'm just going to kind of stick those there. Let's hit play and go to four frames. One, two, three, four, and stop. That was five frames, but that's okay. Um, and the idea is I just want to have different um, rocks kind of all over the place. Um, but that did not look very good. Let's go back to our random effector. Let's change our Y to zero. And let's change these to 500 and 500. That's good. All right, let's change it to zero. Let's do like 100. Okay. And now, just going to kind of stick some random little rocks right here. We can even change our seed if we need to, because some of these rocks look a little bit kind of kind of weird here. Where's my seed? There we go. All right, let's try this one. Push play for four seconds. Stop it. All right. So now you can see we've got like all of these different rocks just on the ground or on the, the table there. And um, I think that could work right there. There's a few little rocks in here I don't want because they're like blocking the United States here. So let me turn that off. And some of them are not even hitting the ground. I want them to hit the ground. So let's try this one more time. Let's go to our Verani Fracture. Here. I'll get this figured out eventually. This is kind of what happens every time I do Cinema 4D. It's just like really... much trial and error. All right, how about that? And now let's just make these a little bit smaller. Oh, that's me. Oh, we're going the wrong way. That's why. There we go. Let's hit play for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Stop. That's pretty good. Well, I think we did. I did five seconds. Let's do. Let's make sure we only do four, because I don't want to lose that shape of America. 
Okay, let's stop it right there. Nope, I still feel like we're losing the shape. So let's do it one more time. Okay, right there. I think we got the shape down pretty good like that. So I think that looks pretty good. Got all of our pieces there. All right, I think that's good. I think we're gonna leave it right here for now. So let's go back to our original camera. There we are. We can zoom out just a little bit. I think that looks good. Now what we want to do is we want to render this. So it's we've taken about 15 minutes to do this in Cinema 4D. Let's go ahead and render it. I'm gonna render it pretty high. Let's see what our, our image side here is 5616 by 3744. I don't want it to be quite that big. That's pretty big. Um, let's do like, what would it be at 3500? So 3500 by 2333, let's try that because I don't want to spend all t all day um, rendering something. Let's do 25, 3,500 by 2333, and we'll change it to 300 for our resolution. Let's do a redshift render, and I think that's going to be good. Is our camera right? I think our camera is right. I'm going to do one more. I'm still not 100% happy with the, the way the shape is getting lost. So let's try it like this. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay. I don't know if I changed anything there, but all right, that's good right there. Let's go ahead and render it. And so I'm going to just hit my render button. It's going to take just a couple minutes to render. Um, shouldn't take too long. Okay, it's not gonna take too long at all, but I see a lot of noise in there. You can see all of this noise, all of these this grain. I don't like that grain. But this is what it would look like. That looks like United States of America, so that's good. That's kind of what I wanted. There you can see Maine up there. Everything looks good. Like that. Okay, so I like this render, except there's just too much grain. So I'm going to um I'm going to change my settings real quick. Let's go into um, Redshift, and I'm going to change my unified sampling um, up to, um, we're going to do it 128, oops, I'm sorry, 64 by 128, and uh, I think that's going to help a little bit of the grain. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, while we're doing that in Cinema 4D, I want to go ahead and, and cut out my praying hands right here. And so we are in Photoshop now. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm just going to use my pencil. Cinema 4D is busy working in the background, so this is a great time just to go ahead and work on a different part of the picture. And so I'm just going to cut out these praying hands, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the Cinema 4D picture underneath these hands and add a few little shadows, and then uh, we'll be pretty much done. All right, guys, we've cut it out. So we've got our praying hands in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as our PSD file. We've got our hands here, and so let's go ahead and see if Cinema 4D is done rendering. It looks like it is. So that looks pretty good like that. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and save this render. And we're gonna save it as country render and now let's open it up in our photoshop project country render there it is let's go ahead and select that bring it in here and we're going to put it right underneath these hands just like that and i'm just going to make it bigger because remember we didn't render it to full size uh but yeah something like that looks good okay now that is the uh that's that's the most of the work has been done now. The rest of the way is super, super easy. And I want to show you how to do that real quick. And so all we've got to do now at this point is create the shadows on the um, 
America, the broken America um, layer right here. So let's just go ahead and call this America. And so what we want to do is we want to put a, uh, a new layer on top of it. We're going to call these hand shadows and just make sure you clip it to your America layer. And I'm just going to grab some of these colors that are in the shadows already. So it's like a, a nice dark gray color, kind of like that. It doesn't really have a lot of saturation in it, but just like that, change this blend mode to multiply and then put your flow down pretty low. And so we need to add some, um, some shadows here. And so they need to be on the left side, of course, because you see the shadows in the America, it's just the shadows are going to be on the left side. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to start painting um, you can zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. Just painting a little bit of shadows right here to the left of this uh, hand. Not a lot. It's not going to be terribly, you know, dark shadows or anything like that. But there are going to be some shadows here. So I'm going to make sure that that's done like this. Same thing down here. We want to make sure that this hand has shadows here on the left side of it as well. And then when we get down here, we're gonna make sure it looks like it makes contact with the uh, the ground here. You can actually grab some of these um, colors that are in the scene as well, because there is gonna be just a little bit of reflective light that has some color in it. Uh, so you could do that as well. Make sure you get uh, a little bit larger size sometimes. Sometimes these shadows need to be a little bit longer. Uh, so something kind of like that. And then when you get down here to this purple part of the uh, the sleeves here, it's nice to grab like a dark color here that's got just a little bit of purple in it because there will be a little bit of reflective color in here. And so it's nice to kind of do that as well. But I'm just painting, I'm just painting little shadows. Uh, that's that's all that's going on here. Some of them have a little bit more color in the shadows than others. But for the most part, just nice little dark gray shadows here perfect do the same thing over here so just make sure there's some shadows right here on this left part of the arm grab some of those brown colors but just a little bit don't overdo it and then grab some of these purple colors here but mostly dark gray and vary your size on your brush as well there you go and I feel like up here needs to be a little bit darker, so I'm just going to paint just a little bit darker colors right here. And right there as well. And then probably down here needs to be a little bit darker. But yeah, this is all it is. It's just it's just painting shadows, just painting dark shadows. Where the actual uh, hand is is making contact with the ground, which is probably right here you would want it to be darkest. And then as it gets up here where it's probably not actually touching the ground, uh, then it's gonna be a little bit lighter. Nice little feathered, one's out here. Okay, so let's zoom out and see what we've done. Here is our before and after with the shadow. You used to see how much uh, more realistic that is. And I could spend all day doing this. I don't want to spend all day doing this, but I could. And then if you ever mess up, you know, just do a layer mask and get a nice large brush here and just kind of fade it out just a little bit if you feel like you've uh, messed up there. Okay, so that looks good. I could go up to my hands layer and do a little bit of a levels adjustment on that as well if I wanted to, if I just want to make it a little bit darker or, um, you know, play around with my, my colors here so it kind of matches the scene just a little bit better. I could uh, certainly do that. And then... Um, that looks pretty good right there. So I'm, um, for the most part, happy with that. The last thing I want to do, I want to show you in this tutorial, is um, how to add some colors of the flag. So I'm just going to Google American flag. Uh, you get so many uh, options when you do that. So let me just find an American flag real quick. All right, here is an American flag off of the internet. I'm just gonna drag this up and uh, just kind of make it bigger. So it kind of fills the entirety of the, um, the little country here. So just like that. This is a low resolution picture, but it doesn't matter um, for what we're gonna do. Um, now what I want to do, let me go ahead and cut off this white part on the edges. So I'm just gonna get a, a rectangle tool here 
and just copy and paste that just so I don't have those edges there. Uh, let's bring that back down to our America file. So we've got it here. This is actually um, below the shadows. So you can still see the shadows are interacting with the flag and that's perfectly okay. Uh, I am gonna warp it just a little bit so it fills the entirety of the, uh, the continental US right there. There we go. And now I'm gonna change it to color or hue, hue or color. Let's do color. All right, do color, and then I'm going to change the opacity way down to like 25% or so, something like that. I don't want it to be like in your face. I want it to be pretty subtle. So anywhere between like 15 and 25, I think looks good. Um, and then I just need to make sure I mask out uh, the parts that go off of the actual rocks here. So I'm just gonna make sure that I erase these parts up here, these parts up here. Um, because I don't want those to go on the ground. They're only going to go on the rocks. And even these little random rocks over here, I don't want any colors on those either. So just erasing it with the layer mask right down here where Texas is at. Just make sure that there's no colors where there shouldn't be colors. Just like that. Okay. I think I got most of it. I could zoom in and be more accurate here, but I think that's, I think that's fine. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and grab that uh, flag again. Can, um, just go ahead and copy and paste it and you got a brand new one right here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to grab all of these white stars here. So I just did a magic uh, tool here, magic selection tool, and uh, got all these white stars. Do a layer mask on that. And so now you can see that I can see all those white stars. I don't want the, um, the stripes though. So let's just go ahead and erase these stripes. Get rid of these stripes. All right, stripes are there. And uh, let's go ahead and get rid of these stars that are not on the rock. Okay, that's good. And now let's change that to soft light. And uh, that looks pretty good. You could change it to overlay also. I think soft light's gonna be a little bit better. Just nice and little subtle. We can duplicate it as well. And uh, that way it's just a little bit more, it's a little bit stronger. That's probably too strong. I wanted to make sure it's kind of subtle. So something like that. And you could also, you don't have to, but you could also paint like that white color on that soft light. Um, you could paint that somewhere. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I want to do that. Um, but you could paint it like on the uh, the stripes where the stripes are supposed to be at. But I, I would be careful with that. We changed it the color earlier, which the color of white is essentially just monochrome. So I think I'm just going to leave that blank. Uh, but something like that, I think, looks okay. Okay, so I'm just going to tone that down just a little bit all right last thing i want to do let's just go have a little bit more contrast to those hands because you see all these nice dark shadows in the um the rocks here let's add just a little bit more contrast to our hands here maybe a little bit more brightness and then let's tone down our um, colors here so i'm just do a black and white on top of the hands and then just tone it down a little bit that so something kind of like that guys that's that's how i would do that that's how i would create this praying hands over um america here this is i would create that all in cinema 4d and then take a picture of our our hands and just kind of blend that over the top i would probably spend a little bit more time on this to make it a little bit more realistic but i hope that it gives you a little bit of inspiration on how to do something like this really fun project and hopefully a pretty powerful po project as well as we get closer to uh independence day in our country and uh, we want to be praying for our country for our leaders uh, but thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it and i can't wait to see what you guys can create but until the next video happy creating and i'll see you again very soon